Here I want to say more about the relativity and the twin paradox and uh, the redshift of light and gravity. The twin paradox involves Einstein's idea of time dilation and special relativity. One twin goes out at near the speed of light and comes back years later, or you know, months later, and millions of years later, actually, when they reach the Earth, because time has slowed down for special relativity. But um, if we say that, why is it that the Earth twin is having such high speed of time? And uh, in relativity, in special relativity, Einstein is saying that, uh, you know, the, um, the two twins are symmetrical. That is to say, it's either, which is at rest or motion, either one can say the other one has slowed down time, and they don't. They're equally valid to say so. And Einstein says that only when they, they accelerate the one that's gone, accelerates back and comes back around, do they find out there's a difference in their time. But I think this is not really true for um, the both twins are, are equivalent. They would have, um, each one would say each other was uh, the other one who had the slower time. And so this is something that relativity doesn't really explain. And we also say that uh, Einstein, in this twin paradox, uses the idea of one twin, which is staying on the Earth. And so in some fundamental sense, he's saying that the gravity or the Earth twin is somehow unsymmetrical, as we would expect relativity to tell us would be true. And uh, so for this reason, you know, I think that um, the energy mass energy equivalent of special relativity equivalence is actually an energy energy equivalence because you're moving at near the light, you pick up energy from that field, so it's an energy energy equivalence that's changed from the energy to mass or mass to energy. And uh, so this is why you have particles and particles, the plus and minus charge, like Dirac tried to use to, um, they're balanced, each one is balanced. And so you try to convert, as you have as much matter as any matter, and Dirac was unable to do this in subatomic physics because there's always much more matter than any matter. So um, we say that this is um, evidence that, uh, you know, Einstein was not necessarily correct because there would be as much matter as any matter and it's much easier to convert your matter and any matter to energy than energy to mass they're asymmetrical and so this is one reason i think that relativity is flawed in its logic and um so also if you have the gravitational redshift you may say well, what about that we can measure the the redshift of light there's a slowing of time well there is a slowing of time for going faster and near the speed of light i would say this is no doubt because you, know, you have uh, the particles lining up in a high energy field, and their pole, their direction of motion is along the, the pole is along the direction of motion, and so you're going to have them polarized because if they spin transversely, you're going to have one side that's spinning uh, with the pole sideways. You're going to have where that that top of that spin is going faster than light towards the direction. So to minimize the force on the particles, they all line up, and so you're going to have um, a sort of um, you know uh, method of way which the the spins are all like like helixes and they wind out as time slows down because of periodic fluctuation in special relativity. Time slow down is no problem here, but the idea that uh, you, could, you couldn't just cancel it out when you return back, I don't think is necessarily true because, you know, you may say, well, what about the gravitational redshift? This shows there's a redshift. But um, I look at liken this to the method of um, a river that's accelerating and, you know, you have um, the spring in the river, not spring. This time, this month of the year, I think it's like it's like you know um, May right here now. It's my my favorite month of Amy. So Amy, Amy likes me with I'm alright, you know, and she's a honeybee. A a downstream looking up, you would see a, a redshift, but you see a blue shift with gravity relativity. And looking um, upstream, you would see compression towards you. So you'd see a blue shift, not a redshift. So, obviously, um, there is a redshift and a blue shift, or GPS wouldn't work. So, I think what's going on really is that uh, the mass itself that's emitting that light has actually got um, a blue shift. It does have a blue shift, but the light is going upward, and as it goes upward, it's being stretched, it's being pulled apart at faster than light. The light, if you have the light going downward at the speed of light, then the gravity at the speed of light, as supposedly the, the new method they found with the gravity waves, then we would say that um, there can be no change in that light going downward. There can be nothing but a, but no change, no change. And uh, so I think that what's going on is that uh, the gravity has got a tidal effect. The lower uh, zone of the helix is pulling it downward while the upper has got uh, less pull, and so it stretches it apart. So you would have certainly a redshift of gravity, certainly. And the problem is that if you have this redshift down near the surface, 
then all the clocks are running slower, so they're going to have a longer wavelength, and the Earth would spin slower, not faster with more mass at on, because mass is supposedly slowing time. And also, you're going to have uh, the Earth inside out. It's going to have more room inside where there's more redshift than there is blue shift. And you're going to have, uh, you know, a sphere would uh, be not, it'll be like, at the top is where it's going to have most of its bend, and not on the sides, by compression. So for this reason, I think that ultimately what's really going on is there is a definite sort of, um, you know, the, the time is not changed, it's only the rate of change. It's not changing the events themselves. And so I believe that the time is actually um, changing the local time near the clock, near the, you know, the mass of the surface is actually speeding up. This is a gravitational blue shift, as we'd expect, if gravity is an acceleration, it speeds things up. It speeds things up to see the spin. And uh, so also, you know, we would say, well, you know, um, this is evidence, I think, that... Um, Relativity is not correct, and in order for that light to change, you have a you know redshift as you're looking upward or whatever, you know blue shift. You're going to have um, the, the the gravity has to move faster than light to do it, and so I think the LIGO is actually measuring. Uh, it's either a spoof or a goof. Like they're saying on, we see some sites are saying that and somebody could be cheating who's like trying to get the funding for the other build the other gravity telescope, get the money to build it, and um, also of course it's only one experiment so far, and there haven't been a repeat of it yet. So I think it's also possible that inertia is what they measure because Einstein and Mott believe that gravity and inertia were equivalent. And so what you're actually measuring is the speed of inertia, not of gravity. And uh, as I say on my other videos, there's a simple experiment I propose we can do to use it like the, um, the, the, the uh, torsion balance machine with uh, the CME from the sun, the great most explosive event in the solar system. And it's moving at the speed of light. So we would see, um, we might see the gravity almost instantaneous because it's lighter than light because it's faster than light from the generalization of Maxwell's method. But also, you would see a half hour light, hour later from a half hour light from it. You would see the inertia, you know, the gravity wave, what Einstein called the gravity wave, and you'd also see the, um, you know, the, the events from the, the light from it, from that event. And um, this is actually, um, you know, it's uh, doable either with the torsion machine or we could use arrays of atomic clocks to measure this, this uh, change, perhaps, in what LIGO might see.